Now that we created our database, we created our migration, now we're ready to start getting information from our database. What we'll do is we'll inject our DB context right into the controller. Now, in this video, I'm not going to be getting into creating repositories and things like that. We'll be doing that later down the road. For now, just to test our skeleton, just to get things working, we'll inject our DB context we created in the last video. We'll just inject that right into the controller itself. And then we'll do, just set up a couple methods. One will get all the values from the database, and another one will get values by their individual ID. I'm thinking of using the values controller. The reason is, is we'll, we'll just use that as our testing environment. We're going to be deleting that in a couple of videos anyways. But for now, just to get us up and running, make sure everything's working, we'll use the values controller. Now, these two URLs I have here, you'll find them down in the description. You just click on these links. It'll send, them, send you to those pages. And then as well, I'll have snippets down there. Uh, you just click on the snippets link. It'll send you to a snippets page. And you can just copy and paste all the code I'm creating in this video right into your project. Now let's go and check out this link. Now we were looking at this in the last video and this shows you how to set up your DB context. And we already did that. And it's called application DB context. Now we need to just go and set up our controller. And this is how you could do that. And let's go into our values controller and take care of this. So if we go into our, our project control P, open up that values controller. And then at the top here, we're going to set up our constructor. And then right here, CTOR, and then just hit tab, and it'll fill it in for you like that. Make sure you name it correctly. Then we need to pull in our application DB context. And then you could call it anything you want. I'll call it context. Initialize it. Oh, and also pull this in. I'll pull it in from our data access layer. Initialize this property here. And I will use this one. Put an underscore here. I, that's just a personal preference. And then make sure you change this. And that's it. That's all you need to do to set up your constructor. Now we could use this property th throughout any of your methods to query the database. Let's set up our first uh, method here. Now this one's going to get all the values from the database. I'm just going to rename it. And as well, we'll change this. This will be a async method. So async and then as well a task. And we'll use I action result instead of action result. And that's it. That's all you need to do with that. Now it's going to complain about an error because we're not using the await. We'll be using that in a second. Let's just change this over. Get rid of this error and we'll return OK. Now we can use our underscore context to query the database. I'm just going to add that to a variable, call it values, and then context, and then the values table, and then we're going to use to list async. So to list async, we'll need to pull this in. This should give us back a list of values and pull this in from entity framework core. And then this is an async method. We'll have to set this to a wait. And make sure you pass your values back to whoever's calling it. And that's it for this method. This method is complete. Moving on, now we want to get an individual value by its ID. This I'll just change over to this. It's going to be the same. And replace this. And then we'll return OK. And we will also be doing something similar to this, but this will be an individual value that we will be returning. So value equals, and we need to do a wait again. Now this will be first or default. We will be checking out the documentation in a second for this, but this will return a null if you can't find anything in the database. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. So we'll just use this. And then we need to do our query for the ID that's being passed in. And we'll query the database for that ID. Now I'm going to call it V for value. And then V ID tab then equals the ID that was passed in uh, through here. And we could go change the name to this as well. We'll get value. That'd be fine. Okay. 
make sure you're passing back your value to whoever's calling it. And now we're ready for testing. Before we do that, let's check these methods out online. I have that open in the other link here. Here are a bunch of different methods you could use. Now, I remember when I first started using these methods a while back, I, I was wondering what is the difference between first async and first or default async? And the difference is this will throw in a, a, a exception if it can't find, well, let's say you pass in the ID, you know, you know, two or whatever, and it can't find that ID two in a database, it will throw an exception. Now, I remember I was like, well, why would you want to purposely throw a exception? Well, let's say, for example, your application is relying on that ID being in the database, like your application needs it to be there. You might want to throw an exception on purpose to, you know, let you know that this is a serious problem. You know, there you can't find that ID. But in our case, I care less if the ID is in the database or not. So in that case, we use the first or default async to, just to return back in null. You know, so that's fine. And if you notice, uh, it's similar with the last async and as well the single async and the single or default. They're very similar. And then as well, we're using the to list async that will return a list, but you could return, you know, a, di a dictionary, a array, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, if you're trying to query the database, I highly recommend checking out these methods on this page. It might give you some ideas, different ways you can use or query your database. Now that that is done, let's start up, let's boot up our application and test these two methods in Postman. And that, so I'll just open up the command line, navigate into your API. So change directory API dot or CI dot API and then boot it up. So I'm just going to run dot net run. Now that that is booted up, I'm going to go open up our database. We're going to need to add some data to our database. So we have something to query. We're going to need data to query. So let's go and add some data to our database. Now I already started adding a whole bunch of data to our values table. If you click on browse data here and I added just to save some time, I'll added a whole bunch of values to our database. I just want to show you how to add information here. So you could just go and click on new record and then just click on the null and then enter in whatever you want. And I'll just put in like value nine, keep it the same and that's it. And then you apply. Now I always forget to do this uh, right here. You want to write your changes. Like what I do is I add a bunch of data and then I'll go and test it and it's not there. It won't show up. And I'm like, well, why won't it show up? Well, the reason is, is I have to write the changes. I keep forgetting to do that. So just click this and that should um, add the new uh, value right here. Mm -hmm. Now let's go into our postman. We'll go and we'll check to see if our those APIs that we changed are working. Here in Postman, I already have the APIs created and here they are, values controller. And just open those up. Now here we should get back a list of values. If you click on send, and we are getting all nine of the values back and that's that's great. And we're getting back a 200, okay. And then if we go and we test our API, now this ID does not exist for getting an individual value by its ID. And we should get back no content if we hit send. And 204, 204 no content, that is good. Now let's go and pass in a ID that does exist. So let's pass in nine. And then hit send and we should get back that individual value. Okay, great. Now in the next video, what we'll do is start building out the front end. So we'll set up our spa. We'll create our Angular application in the next video. So I'll see you then.